Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and it's coming to that time of year again, when the annual Read What You Own Challenge begins. This year, the Read What You Own Challenge will start Monday, November 6, 2023. This challenge originally started as a, by Criminali, the evil mastermind, to sort of atone for the way he started his channel. His idea was he was going to read 100 books that he already owned before buying another book. You'll have to look up his story. And some other booktubers took up that challenge, including me. Mine started as a, a bit of a joke when I was talking to my wife over dinner. And I said, these silly booktubers, they're going to read 100 books that they own before they buy another book. And my wife looked at me and she says, you own enough books to do that challenge. Why don't you do it? And you know, like, what the hell did I do? So I sort of got roped into doing it the first year. But here's the thing. I really loved the 100 book challenge. It was a lot of fun going through the books that I already owned and, and finding what I wanted to read that had been sitting there for quite a long time. And I made that challenge. I finished that challenge. I actually finished that challenge before Criminali. So then the year afterwards, it started up again. Now, by this time, the challenge was well known and there were some additions to the rule. Instead of just being the 100 book challenge, it was decided to make it a little more acceptable to all readers. Because realistically, some readers cannot read 100 books before buying another book. That's hard for even me. Because some readers are very slow. They have day jobs. They have family. And it's just not practical for everyone to do a 100 book challenge. So we started a tier system where you had um, a bronze tier at 25 books a silver tier at 50 books, a gold tier at 75 books, and a platinum tier at 100 books. Those tiers are again in effect for 2023. And we want you to join the challenge if you are feeling up to it. Are you the type of person who buys way more books than you can ever read? then this is a challenge for you. And when you are deciding what tier to look at, you have to judge how much time you want to spend on this challenge and um, how quickly you can finish this challenge. When I did it last year, I finished my 100 book challenge in 20 weeks. I think that's a pretty good time. It, it makes you feel the, the strain of not being able to buy books, but it's doable especially for someone like me, who has way more books than I could possibly read. Or, you know, it's way more books that I own than I can possibly read. So I'm doing this 100 book challenge again, the platinum tier, and I will start on November 6. Now, there are exceptions to these rules, and exceptions are necessary because um, occasionally you do have to buy a book. And I do have some exceptions that I'm going to put into place. One is for the BookTube prize. I do plan to register as a judge for the BookTube prize next year. I don't know what those books are going to be until next year, until I'm well into my challenge. So they are all an exception. If I don't own that book on the BookTube prize reading list, I'm gonna to have to go out and get it. Now, what I'm going to try to do is get it from the library first, so I don't have to buy it. If I do have to buy a book for the BookTube challenge, it's not gonna to count towards my reading goal. It won't penalize me for buying a book, but I don't get to count it towards my goal. The same goes for buddy reads and book clubs, because sometimes I wanna do a buddy read and I do belong to an in-person book club, and I will probably have to buy some books for that book club. Gifts 
are totally acceptable. They don't count against you for buying a book. You're not buying them. You're just receiving them. But they would not count towards a reading goal if I chose to read one of those gifts during this period. Also is Amazon gift credit. I sometimes buy things from Amazon, like cat food for my cats and cat treats. Um, and they sometimes give um, digital credit. And um, I have to use that credit before it expires. Now, what I am going to try to do is um, not use that digital credit unless it's expiring. So if the digital credit expires within a certain month and that month is at the first of the month, then I can use that credit towards whatever digital purchase I want. It will not penalize me for buying a book. But again, if I read that book, it does not count towards my reading goal. Another issue is um, Kindle Unlimited. I am subscribed to Kindle Unlimited. That is a um, monthly fee. You get access to certain books that are in the Kindle Unlimited um, catalog, and you pay $11.50 or $11.99 per month. Technically, I think I can cancel that and resubscribe, but I don't want to be that type of person. So for this, I'm going to put a rule in place for the Kindle Unlimited. I'm allowed, I believe, 25 books that I can check out under Kindle Unlimited. When the book challenge starts, I will not be able to add any more books to that list. So I'm going to have to fill out my list of 25 before the 100 book start challenge starts, and I will not be able to add any new books. But those books are going to be considered bought books and will can count towards my reading goal. Another issue that I'm going to be doing this year in the past is I've included all my audiobooks because I subscribe to Audible. I buy my yearly subscription of 24 credits and um, just count them as books that I've bought. This year, I'm excluding audiobooks towards my reading goal. So whatever I listen to on an audiobook is not going to count towards my reading goal. Now, this is going to put a big strain on me because I still want to finish within 20 weeks. And last year, it was about 20 to 30 percent of my books that I read were audiobooks. So I'm going to have to um, step on the gas to get this challenge done in 20 weeks. And that, in essence, is my 100 book challenge for this year. I hope other people will join this challenge because even though it's hard not buying books for an extended period of time, it is actually very satisfying to read what you own and get through this and know that you don't have to succumb to temptation. Now, there's also a coda. It's called the master of my domain, Coda. And this is where you don't have any exceptions to the, 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 the 100 book challenge. Now, I, I honestly think I really cannot do the master of my domain challenge because I am going to be part of the BookTube prize. Probably. I guess there's a chance that I won't be selected, but I'm probably going to have to buy some books for that BookTube prize. So really... I'm probably not going to be master of my domain, but maybe I can get away with it because a lot of the book two prizes that I read are audiobooks, and um, they're sort of not in this challenge this year, as I said. So who knows? And that is my challenge. I do hope you join. Um, I am going to add a coda to this video. I'm going to hold up a box, a pile of possibilities of my print books that I own that may be part of this challenge. You don't have to watch to the end of those because it's just me holding up a lot of books and reading a lot of titles. Thank you for watching and keep on reading. Look at this. Ugh, I've put a lot of print books in this tote bin. These are just a pile of possibilities. I may read all of these books. I may not. And I'm just going to read the titles that I have in here. Or 
at Fortnoy by Alexander Dumas. Almost Transparent Blue by Rue Murakami. Fateless by Emir Kurtzes. Willie Masters Lonesome Wife by William Gass. Sloppy Seconds by Rath James White. The Last Temptation of Christ by Nikos Kasazginkis. The Eighth Day of the Week by Marik Hlasko. The Galactic Bree by Lee Brackett or Conquest of the Space Sea by Robert Moore Williams. Spaceways Number One of Alien Bondage by John Cleave. Taylor Cadwell, Wicked Angel. The Bedside Mad by William Gaines. Never Die by Barry Hanna. The Big Kill by Mickey Spillane. The Black Corridor by Michael Moorcock. Yellow Street by Visa Canetti. The Ballad of Typhoid Mary by J.F. Feederspill. Carter Brown, The Unorthodox Corpse. Hi, Bad. Thanks for the gift. Morton Rocher, The Incurable Wound. Across by Peter Hanka. A Hell of a Woman by Jim Thompson. Furman by Sam Savage. The Burning World by J.G. Ballard. Lest Earth Be Conquered by Frank Beltnup Long. Darkover Landfall by Marion Zimmerman Bradley. Manhound of Antarctis by Alan Burt Akers. Bucko Story by Larry Hindman. The Last Days of Christ the Vampire by J.G. Echorus. A Posthumous Confession by Marcalis Eminence. Joyland by Stephen King. A Song of Truth and Semblance by Seize Nootboom. Carpenter's Gothic by William Gaddis. The Origin of the Crabs by Guy N. Smith. The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner by Alan Stilatone. Donovan's Brain by Kurt Sotomayor. Miss Lonely Hearts by Nathaniel West. 
The Heckler by Ed McBain. The Boat by Walter Gibson. The Dreaming Jewels by Theodore Sturgeon. The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. The Lovers by Philip Jose Farmer. Rogue Male by Jeffrey Household. The Player on the Other Side by Ellery Queen. Ghostwritten by Robert Silverberg. The Edge Killers Breed. La Mansion des Rendezvous by Alan Robert Goulet. This is actually an English translation. Damien, Omen 2. Not by... It doesn't say who it is by. The Gunsmith, Bullets and Ballots. Long Arm and the Windigo by Tabor Evans. Lone Star and the Opium Rustlers by Wesley Ellis. The Odd Couple by Neil Simon. The Lurker at the Threshold by H.P. Lovecraft. Actually, it's August Durless, but it says H.P. Lovecraft. And the final program by Michael Moorcock. If you have gotten to the end of this list of books and you see something that you think I should leave, please leave the title in the comments below. Thank you for getting through to the end.